Hi, everybody. It is December 2nd, 2017. Brave New World Revisited. Huxley wrote this in 1958. It's 2017 now. It's a very interesting read. If you have not read it, click on the link below. I want to read just a few paragraphs. As I was reading comments, I was reminded of Brave New World Revisited. Comments from subscribers who are having a lot of difficulty with their spouses, with their significant others, with their sons, daughters, mothers, fathers. They treating them with such disrespect. They getting enraged when you guys have a different way of thinking and you try to share it with them. When you see the dangers in the world, the poisons, the vaccines or the chemtrails, the geoengineering, the Agenda 21, Agenda 2030, when you try to engage them in conversation, their response is to treat you with such disrespect get angry at you, or laugh at you, mock you, call you names. It's very sad when I read, when I read those comments, I do get, it, it's disturbing. It's disturbing to hear how many people are in this world simply existing as these programmed robots that are programmed to silence you, snuff you out. The go along to get along society that we have become has so thoroughly destroyed individuality And I do think a lot of it does stem from the fear of abandonment that Mark Passio talks of. People so afraid that should they have their own independent, individualized thinking, if they should think differently than the majority, if they behave differently, if they act differently, then they'll be tossed away. And that goes for the awake. There's an awful lot of awake people who are filled with fear. the insistence, the peer pressure, insists that we be like everybody else. Dress the same, act the same, speak the same, have the same take on life, have the same view, have the same opinion. And if you don't, Boy, if you even just make one mistake of having a different take on something, a different opinion on just one little issue, boom! That's when they come out and attack. Even before I begin to read the paragraphs that I wanted to begin to read, I'm going to start right here to parody the words of Winston Churchill, never have so many been manipulated so much by so few. We are far indeed from Jefferson's ideal of a genuinely free society composed of a hierarchy of self-governing units, the elementary republics of the wards, the county republics, the state republics, and the republic of the union 
forming a gradation of authorities. Modern technology has led to the concentration of economic and political power and to the development of a society controlled ruthlessly in the totalitarian states, politely and inconspicuously in the democracies. Remember, this was 1958. We were far more mm, civilized then than we are in 2017. Now we have become a thoroughly ruthless society and it's not just being controlled by our ruthless leaders but by those in our lives by our social network of friends they demanding that we be just like them dare to speak your mind should it be different than their mind well we've all experienced it right you are slammed back in line and if you don't get in line you're thrown out that's ruthless and it could be over something so small. Why? Why is this happening? Why does it happen with people who say they love us? Why does it happen that we get so thoroughly insulted, mocked, laughed at, called names? The disrespect that these people who claim to love us, show us? Well, what does that say about us that remain in relationship with these people? There is a self-hatred within an awful lot of people. And for most, it is unconscious. The self-hatred comes about when we deny our own true self. And we have an awful lot of people denying their own true self. Fear of abandonment comes into play. Go along to get along. I don't want to be abandoned. I don't want to be thrown out. So. I'm going to behave, I'm going to dress, I'm going to uh, think, I'm going to share the same view and opinion that everybody else has. But when we do that, we betray our true self and we become more and more angry. And instead, of having the courage to face the truth of our own self and what we're doing, we attack those who dare to show us that we have been betraying our own true self. When you have a majority of individuals in a country in a society that are going along to get along the person who is capable of independent thought and shares it because they don't have the support from those around them Everybody is acting and behaving and speaking as the one who goes along to get along. It's the one who doesn't go along to get along. They get attacked and put in place. And that reveals a very sick society. Yeah, modern technology.
has led to the concentration of economic and political power and to the development of a society controlled ruthlessly in the totalitarian states, politely and inconspicuously in the democracies by big business and big government, but societies are composed of individuals and are good only insofar as they help individuals to realize their potentialities and to lead a happy and creative life. Isn't that the point of being in close relationship with friends and family that you help one another realize your respective potential, that you enhance the individual, you help them to grow into who they were meant to be, and you each help one another to live creatively. If that is not happening, then you exist stagnant, just simply biding one another's time until you die. Life is really magnificent, but it's only magnificent if you engage in it, if you bring yourself to the fore and stop acting like a programmed robot. How have individuals been affected by the technological advances of recent years? Here is the answer to this question given by a philosopher psychiatrist, Dr. Eric Fromm. Our contemporary Western society, in spite of its material, intellectual, and political progress, remember this was 1958, we've gone backwards. We haven't progressed. We've become a rather uncivilized society, dumbed down and, well, materially, so many are worse off. But that is the kind of society that becomes increasingly less conducive to mental health. So now, as we are getting more and more dumbed down, as Americans are getting more and more destroyed, the middle class is pretty much destroyed. Intellectually, um, we now mock and insult those who think for themselves, who engage in, in research and want to expand you know, their mind. The intellect now is just something that is regarded as, as something that is, well, demean it. it it's, what, well, people laugh at people who use their brains. It's scary what has happened in a rather fast, rapid way. You know, critical thinking. All of the things that really bring uh, us life, life, for the programmed robots out there who never want to grow, who never ever think about their, their own experiences, who never engage in that process of self-reflection and reevaluating at times how they're living their life, who never ever engage in the process of maturity and wonder about life and they are they are the ones who are dead bury the dead they're simply just 
stagnant automatons. And it's very sad to see this. I've engaged them. I can't be around them because they, they drag you down. They love their mask. They love their dull lives. And they're, for the most part, most of the people that I have met, they are completely and utterly incapable of changing. You don't see any creative spark in them. You don't see... You see children who have never grown up. And I'm not talking about just the sheeple or the sleeping or those who are so thoroughly indoctrinated by mainstream media and their government officials. I'm talking about an awful lot in the awake crowd. They understand what is happening, but they can't change. So they do nothing but what they did the day before. They can't fully engage in life because they're too scared to make any kind of change. And should you challenge them, whether it is um, purposeful or not, anything that challenges them, they get angry at you. They know buried in their unconscious that they are living a life that they were not meant to live, that their creative spirit is gone. They know that somewhere within them there is that individual that is begging them to let them bring forth and but they're too scared. So they attack you. It's, we are living around a lot of people who are mentally ill. And our society has become one that does not permit mental health anymore. It does not permit the individual to rise. It does not permit creativity. That's why they are killing it off young now in Common Core. They don't want individuals. They don't want people who can critically think. They do not want people who are creative. They just want automatons that they can control. And I do think that for most of the automatons in our lives, they know somewhere that they have given up on themselves. They know that they have betrayed themselves. And they're angry about it. They know that they're just going along to get along. They know that they are afraid. They know that they're driven by fear. Now I'm not saying that that's on a conscious level. But they are too afraid to actually live, to engage in life because it is also very demanding on us. I mean, when you really 
do this work, it is incredibly hard and demanding and you've got to face the truth of how you did live and who you are and realizing, wow, I'm not really sure who I am. And then when you stay on that road and you learn more and more about yourself and you stop betraying yourself, which means that you stop letting other people betray you, you find that you are on a road and there's not an awful lot of people around you. You're alone. So I guess it is easier to just go along to get along, be the automaton, and demand that other people in your life be just like you are. And they can do that because there are so many people just like them. If it doesn't work out with you, well, we have become a throwaway society. I can find, I can find me an automaton. I can find me who, uh, someone who's not going to, you know, be the individual and share what they think when it is different from what I think. I can find someone just like me. But can we find people who are individuals in life? Can we find the people that we need who will help us to become more aware of ourselves and really become the individuals that we were meant to be? Where are they? There are few out there and they are <laughs> very hard to find. Our contemporary Western society, in spite of its material, intellectual, and political progress, is increasingly less conducive to mental health and tends to undermine the inner security, happiness, reason, and the capacity for love in the individual. Love, genuine love, compels one to behave in a way towards the person that they love with respect. It doesn't demand silence. It wants the individual to become who they are. Genuine love, really, it, it, it's like a force that is wanting the person in your life that you say you love. You want them to get to who they really are. And as they... As they share what they think and their views and their opinions. It doesn't matter if they're different from yours. You listen. You want to engage in conversation with them on their different ways of thinking. You want to be the person in their life that enhances their spirit, their creative spirit, their individuality. You don't, you don't want to silence them. And yet that's what we are finding. We are now living in a society where love has really become something that it's, I think, more about security. Just so that we don't have to be alone. It tends to turn him into an automaton who pays for his human failure with increasing mental sickness and with despair hidden under a frantic drive for work and so-called pleasure. Yes, just give me my paycheck and let me drink and let me watch football and let me watch TV. And shut up. Don't. 
don't dare engage me in conversation that I'm actually going to have to work at trying to understand or no, I want you to think like I do. Otherwise, shut up. I want you to be just like me. Don't be who you are. Our increasing mental sickness may find expression in neurotic symptoms. These symptoms are conspicuous and extremely distressing, but let us beware, says Dr. Fromm, of defining mental hygiene as the prevention of, symptom, of symptoms. Symptoms, as such, are not our enemy, but our friend. Where there are symptoms, there is conflict, and conflict always indicates that the forces of life, which strive for integration and happiness, are still fighting. So, when you engage in this fighting, if you are relating to somebody who is wise enough to recognize there's a symptom here and if you are relating to somebody who respects you and loves you and somebody who's mentally well they will be able to sit down and engage in communication that heals the fight, heals it in such a way that you both grow beyond that point so you don't engage in the same behavior that causes the fight over and over and over and over again. No, you actually resolve the conflict there might be other conflicts up ahead, but with every conflict, you res respect and love one another enough that you sit down and engage and resolve that conflict. But each time, the resolution of that conflict brings about two individuals who are better for it who understand more about their own self and they are engaged in the process of maturation, individualization, and it, it is a very creative energy. But we are consumed with people who are at a very low consciousness and they want everybody else to just be there to be on their level it is very sad and I don't think that most people understand it consciously but that is this is like a subtle unconscious manipulation of those in their life you be like me, or we are going to have problems. And unfortunately, you know, <laughs> we all know that being like them is death. We want life. We want to live. And we want other people in our life that want to live too. Hmm. So, Dr. Fromm of defining mental hygiene as the prevention of symptoms. Yes, symptoms are not our enemy. They are simply a communication that something is wrong and it needs to be resolved. The really hopeless victims of mental illness are to be found among those who appear to be most normal. Many of them are normal because they are so well adjusted to our mode of existence 
because their human voice has been silenced so early in their lives. They do not know who they are. So they do become simply programmed robots. They don't even struggle or suffer or develop symptoms as the neurotic does. They are normal not in what may be called the absolute sense of the word. They are normal only in relation to a profoundly abnormal society which makes them incredibly abnormal. Now all of us were right there. Many of us are still you know, we're all at different levels, different pages. Uh, you know, some are further down the road and some are lagging behind. And what, what it was that brought us to a place where we can see reality glimpses of reality, a different reality than when we were in that matrix. And that reality is forever shifting as we continue to grow and mature and become more and more our individualized selves, become more authentically ourself. How is it that we can do it and others refuse. Refuse. I've met people who've made a conscious choice. Conscious choice not to grow, not to mature, to stay the same. And then they, of course, demanded that I accept that. So, um, I think I think a lot of it comes down to taking life seriously. But then why do some people take life seriously and others just don't? I don't know the answers. But these people who are so well adjusted to a profoundly disturbed society are disturbed themselves. They don't see it because there are so many of them. They see that they're well because they're surrounded by all of the quote-unquote well-adjusted. But you can't be well-adjusted to a profoundly evil, disturbed society. You're not. You benefit from it if you're a success in it and you can go along with all of the demands, the insistence that you be like everybody else. If you can do that, then you have a measure of security But it simply means that you've allowed a system to break you, to make you into a programmed robot. For their benefit, the manipulated masses. You know, I. It truly is very sad to be living this time when we do see so many people that we do care about and we want them to be their own self and they're choosing to be the programmed robot. Those that you really care about, it's profoundly upsetting and because you really care about them, you need to make a choice. You can't be your authentic self with them. 
they then control who you are. And that drags everybody down. That then infects your spirit. That makes me angry. I can't be in those kinds of relationships anymore. So I find that I'm alone. And I know that a lot of you are alone. But I will not betray who I am anymore. So these normal people are normal only in relation to a profoundly abnormal society. Their perfect adjustment to that abnormal society is a measure of their mental sickness. We are surrounded by mentally ill people. These millions of abnormally normal people living without fuss in a society to which if they were fully human beings they ought not to be adjusted still cherish the illusion of individuality. They still believe that they know who they are and they are individuals and they have independent thought when we know they don't. They're lost souls. And one who does not really think about their own soul how they live, their impact on those around them, are truly perhaps those that they refer to in the Bible, that Jesus has buried the dead. In fact, they have been, to a great extent, de-individualized. They just don't see it. Their conformity is developing into something like uniformity, but uniformity and freedom are incompatible. They are incompatible. Those who are choosing to be just like everybody else, they are the ones who are allowing this system to continue. A system that is destroying all of our freedom. Uniformity and mental health are incompatible too. Man is not made to be an automaton and if he becomes one the basis for mental health is destroyed. I hope I made sense I do believe that this is what we are living now with all of those in our lives. Those who refuse to do anything to change themselves, whether awake or asleep. They are the automatons existing until they just don't any longer. 